Hey everyone, today is a special video and that's because we're going to be checking out some of your robots. That's right, a bunch of you have been sending in photos and videos of robots that you've been working on and I'm really keen to show them off to the world. The idea here is that it might act as a sort of inspiration for others, that together we can all learn and get ideas for ways we can build or improve our own robots. Some of these are from following my tutorials, others have nothing to do with them and anywhere in between. Wherever possible, I've tried to include links in the description so that you can go and check them out for yourselves. And if you did send through your stuff, but I've missed it and it's not in here, I'm really sorry about that. Please contact me again and I'll make sure I get it in for whenever I do this next. So without further ado, let's go check out some robots. First up, we've got Manuel Heredia, or Aegenium on Twitter, and it looks like he's followed the tutorials to a T in building his Manilobot Uno. He's even got the same silicon mat that I do, although his looks much more organized. And I especially love the addition of the rubber duck. That's a nice little mascot there. He's been posting regular updates on Twitter with his progress, and it's really nice to see the project come together for someone else. Next is Dingo Oz with his homebrew TurtleBot 3 waffle. So he's borrowed a lot from the TurtleBot 3 design, but he's printed it himself. And what's really great about this design is it offers a lot of flexibility for mounting things like the LiDAR and the motors. He's also printed the wheels himself, which is cool, and the tires are printed with a flexible filament and they fit nicely into the treads on the raw wheels. Then we've got Heatherly, who's got an absolutely beautiful robot here called B. It's got plenty of room in this design and it uses brushless hub motors along with some pretty serious power circuitry. It's also got a proper e-stop for safety, which I like to see, uh, and I'm keen to see how this project progresses. Next up is Clint. Clint is rebooting an old project that he was working on years ago, and he's cut his chassis out on his CNC router, which is pretty cool. You can see the evolution where it's gone from wood to acrylic, and he's designed this custom screen mount so that the whole thing sits into quite a tight form factor. One annoying thing about the pie case that we've both used is the lack of mounting options on the bottom of it. And so Clint has taken things to the next level. He's actually drilled and tapped his own mounting holes in the bottom of the case, which is pretty neat. Now we've got Douglas Beach and his Meatbot, which stands for Mini Expandable Exploring Printed Robot. This is again a pretty similar concept to the TurtleBot where you can easily bolt on new attachments and Douglas has designed the whole thing from scratch in Fusion 360 and printed it. I like this design, a lot of thought has gone into it and hopefully it will be as mini and as expandable and as exploring as the name promises. Next up is Bart van der Hagen with his Mechanum Wheeled Robot. Now I've not actually had a chance to use Mechanum wheels before, but they open up a lot more flexibility because the robot can drive in different directions, so good on your Bart for having a crack at that. He's also got it going in simulation, where he can test things like this a little bit more safely. Then we've got Mark W with another neat little robot. Just like Clint, he's packed a lot into a small package, and he's using an NVIDIA Jetson Nano, which is a bold move. They can be a bit more trouble to get started with if you're a beginner, but they do pack a bit of grunt, so nice work, Mark. With something a little bit different now is Ryan, aka Color of the Sun, aka Unicorn Supercomputer. He's building a three-wheeled electric e-bike that's controlled by Ross. And the idea is that as well as having joystick control, he can potentially add obstacle avoidance and that sort of thing to it. He's going to be taking it to Burning Man, which is a big event held out in the US desert. And so this is a big undertaking, especially to try and do safely. But if he pulls it off, I think it's going to be a very cool project. Now for the only robot arm on the list, and that's Bobby, a robot made by Giero. It uses cycloidal drives, and I think it's pretty neat. I've never built a robot arm before, and my understanding is they tend to be quite a bit trickier than most people expect them to be, so well done. As an aside, my Tormach arm is meant to be arriving next week, and I'm very excited for that. Finally, last but not least, we've got the Scootbot by Technetic. I've had the pleasure of chatting in a bit of detail with Carl about his project, and he sent me nearly a gig of photos and videos. He's working with some mates on building a medium-sized autonomous platform for lawn mowing and that sort of thing, using parts from old mobility scooters and electric wheelchairs. This is an absolutely massive undertaking, and he's gone through a few iterations of almost every single aspect of the design, but I'm really keen to see what it looks like when it's done. Although we all know that this kind of project is never done. I don't know for sure what his plans are, but I'm hoping that once the design's a bit more finalized, he'll be posting about it somewhere so that others can learn from and build it, because I would definitely be willing to give this a go. 
So wherever you're at on your robot building journey, I hope that you found a bit of a nugget of inspiration in this video somewhere. I've been so impressed by everyone's robots, and I know that there are heaps more of you out there who've been building and following along with the tutorials and sending me messages. I'm thinking about doing more of these videos every so often, depending on interest, so I'd love it if you could share with me your robot. The best way to do that is by becoming a patron over at Patreon. The lowest tier isn't too expensive, I think it works out to about 15 US dollars a year, and for that you'll get access to the Discord server, as well as full access to the Discourse Forum, where you can create a new thread and post all about your amazing robot. And if you've got a free account, you can still reply to other people's threads and tell them how great their robots are, and ask questions and that sort of thing. We'll be back to the tutorial series very soon, so stay tuned for that, and I'll see you next time.